Hey everyone, my name is Joe and welcome to part 11 of the top down shooter tutorial in Godot. In this video, you're going to learn how to add ammo to weapons, how to allow the AI and the player to reload, and how to make a reload animation so that you can see when you or some AI actor is reloading. Let's get started. So the thing I really want to focus on in this video is reloading and adding the ability to reload a weapon and in fact requiring that you reload a weapon when your ammo is out. But before that, one refactor I want to do just very quickly is to rename our enemy script to be uh, the actor script just to kind of signify that it is our general purpose AI controlled actor script. It's not just um, for an enemy. So I'm going to rename this to be actor and I'm going to hit or hope that when I hit enter right now, nothing will crash. And I think we're good, maybe not, but uh, if it does crash, at least it will be caught on camera. So you can see, this is what happens. Ah, there we go, classic. Well, I'm gonna restart it back up and make sure everything's good and I'll see you in a second. <laughs> okay. So I'm back, uh, everything did work even though it crashed. Um, it did rename our script to be actor and our ally and our enemy uh, both still work and, and are still using that script. So I think everything is good. We can consider that uh, done and now we can move on to reloading. So the way I'm gonna do that is by coming into our weapon. I'll come into our script here and there's two things we're going to need. One is a variable to store our current ammo, and the other is to store our max ammo. So I'll do var current ammo, and this will be an integer. And we'll set this to be 30. Uh, let's actually do var max ammo. This will be an integer, and we'll set this to be, uh, actually, let's do 10 so we can see this in action. And then I'm going to set this to just be max ammo. I think that'll work, should be good. So we just start off with our max ammo right off the bat. And then if we shoot, we should do current ammo minus equals one. And then, um, so somehow we need a way for our weapon to tell our AI actors, hey, like you've run out of ammo, you really need to reload. Um, we can add handling later eventually if we need to reload, you know, more smartly, like, you know, you may have ammo left, but you just had a big fight, so reload. But for now, we'll just do when, when your chamber's empty, reload. So um, I'm gonna add a signal to do that. So we will say signal um, weapon uh, out of ammo, I suppose. That should be fine. Um, right now, the thought I have is to not worry about limited, or actually caring about how much total ammo is in your gun, to just have it be infinite and you just have to reload, but you can reload as many times as you want. So we'll just say weapon out of ammo for now so our actors can listen to that and then if they detect that signal they can reload so we have that and now what we can say is um, if uh, current ammo equals zero we will emit the signal of weapon out of ammo weapon out of ammo. Speaking of, this is something that makes me super excited for Godot 4.0 and for the new GD script changes because signals are now going to be first class. They're going to be prop. Basically, you can index into them just like properties. So I could do like instead of saying emit signal, I could say like weapon out of ammo dot emit. You know, like I could actually uh, reference this as a property or as something. Um, like as a referenceable thing in our script, which will make it so much easier. And that means you can pass it around, get good type completion for or for signals. And you do kind of currently get type completion with the strings, but it's just not as robust. So anyway, just something to get excited for. Um, so now we are gonna emit a signal for out of ammo, but we're still shooting. So we need to add to this check and make sure that we have ammo. So if attack cooldown, uh, I'll just say if, Current ammo, current ammo, uh, that does not equal zero. And so just another check, make sure we have ammo, that we are not currently on the cooldown and we actually have a bullet, then we can fire. So I think from the weapon side, this is pretty much done. Um, we now just need the code that will listen to this on our actors. So if I come into our actor script, I can Come up here, oh, sorry, AI script. And so it's here within our engage state where we are shooting. Um, 
whenever basically we are facing our target but instead i think we want to reload so um well i think the best way to do this is in our ready function we can do weapon dot connect so we will programmatically connect to our weapons uh weapon out of ammo right this is uh i'm gonna come back in here and oh my i'm all around okay yeah weapon out of ammo so come back to our ai and here we can just say self and then just say um oh yeah hmm so let's just do i'm just gonna say handle reload so for now i'm just gonna make a function in our ai uh called handle reload maybe we can add more like whenever we get this signal maybe we can add more uh functionality later like if you run out of ammo retreat and then reload or something but for now it'll just reload so uh, I'm going to down here just add a function function handle reload and here all we're gonna do is say weapon dot reload um, and I'm realizing I meant to make a function to do that so let's go back into our weapon and do it so if we go into a weapon script we're gonna need a reload function in here that uh, other things can call so we'll say reload and then we'll say uh, current ammo ooh ooh yes so let's say um, this is a good point so I can do current ammo equals max ammo right but we kind of don't want this to just happen instantly we kind of want an animation to happen to show it so I think what I want to do instead actually is um have two functions we will say start reload and then what i'm going to do is say function um, stop reload here so what i'm also going to do is add an underscore in front of stop reload and this is kind of gd scripts way of signifying that this is a, a function that shouldn't be called outside of the script it's kind of like a private function and so i'm going to actually move our current ammo equals max ammo to here and do that and what we want to do is actually um, add, actually, let's see here. We're going to add an animation that will play for this. So I'm going to do animation player dot play. And right now we only have muzzle slash or muzzle flash, not slash. And I'll say reload. And now we'll actually add this animation. So what's going to happen is that we'll make this animation and we'll just play it when you start reloading. And then we will add a function call frame to our animation that will call stop reload and actually update our current ammo to be our max ammo when that animation is done. And that way, uh, you're not instantly getting all your ammo back, you have to wait for the animation to finish. So let's add that animation now. So if I go to our animation player, I'll say new, we'll call this reload. And so there's gonna be two things we wanna do. Um, so unfortunately, if I come into our enemy here, um, we don't really have provided to us a reload animation with this pack but that's totally okay. We can improvise, improvise and just make something simple. Similar to how we kind of, you know, made a decent looking muzzle flash with just one sprite. We can make a reload that looks, you know, totally fine for our, our purposes, just so that there's some visual cue that that's happening. And I think what we're gonna do is just rotate our weapon like this. So it looks like, you know, you're moving it towards this other hand a little bit and you just kind of bring it back, reload, and then it comes back. So it'll just kind of rotate, like still be here, but rotate like this and then come back. And then once it gets back to here is where we'll call that function, the stop reload. So here we're gonna add a property track to our weapon sprite. And this will be rotation degrees. And so let's see, let's start with a second. That's kind of, seems kind of long, but we'll see how it goes. So I want it to start rotated at zero and I want it to end at zero. Um, do I not have snap on? That's weird. Let's make that be exactly at one. But then in the meantime, I want it to be rotated 90 degrees. So if I do this, negative uh, 90 is what I was thinking in my head. So we'll just, you know, move it back and rotate it. Um, I think this is going to look weird because it's like, ro it's not, um, uh, it's not rotating like at this part right here. 
So uh, we'll, we'll see how it looks and we'll come back to that. So we'll do that. And then what I also want is this call method track, which we discussed. And so if I link this to our weapon, what I can do here is at the end, do insert key, and then I can get the script method, script method stop reload. And so now we'll be calling stop reload when we get to the end. So within our weapon, when, when we start to reload, we will play reload. And then once this animation gets here, it will call stop reload and we'll be good to go. And just like that, um, another way you can do it if you don't want to have a function call uh, track within your animation is that you can connect to an animation player's uh, animation finished signal and then you can check the animation name and say if animation finished and animation name equals reload then you can also do something so multiple ways to do it um, I kind of go back and forth on which one I do depending on the situation but just so that you are aware so I think if I'm not forgetting something uh, that we have the stuff we need to get this working um, so now within our AI when uh, we get this weapon out of ammo signal we are going to uh, reload which should trigger that and then we're still like trying to shoot every frame within our AI if we're within range but it doesn't really matter because it doesn't um, detract anything it's just not gonna actually shoot because there won't be any ammo so I think it should be good um, or that our AI should be good now to actually shoot the next thing I want to do is actually add a input key for the player to reload and it'll be, it'll feel a lot nicer once we actually have a UI that shows you how much ammo you have but for now we will just come up to project go to project settings do input map and I'm going to add a reload action we'll add a new key here and it'll be our classic close that now if I come to our player script here I can add a reload function, function reload, and um, I can just say weapon dot start reload. That should be good. Uh, did I type that as a weapon? So it should. Let me just try this again to make sure it. That's weird. Why doesn't it have the auto completion for start reload there? Let me just make sure I didn't mess it up. It is start reload. So that should be good. Let me also make sure I said start reload in our AI because I feel like I said just reload. Yeah, I know me. That's for sure. Okay, so that should be good. Now I'm actually going to try running this, make sure we didn't forget anything, and make sure that the, both the player and the enemy can reload. So now if I run this, we should see... Ah, oh, no. We were so close. Um, let's see. So non-existent function can... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is another common thing. And by the way, I like to include, you know, a little bit of debugging, not all of it. I usually try and filter out or make sure that I've, you know, I we're just a kind of a steady progress forward and we're not just dealing with errors all the time. But I do like including a few errors and trying to get over them because I think it helps when you're new to Godot and new to having problems to kind of run through what problem solving looks like and what debugging looks like um, with with someone else just so you can kind of get a feel for it and um, it kind of helps you to know where to look for problems so that's why I include some of these errors in here and why it isn't just a perfect script that has no errors um, but if you think I'd, I'd be curious to hear what people's thoughts are on that because if, if people would rather just you know get the video and get the get the code and get it to work and not have to deal with this then that's totally fine just let me know in the comments but Anyway, so the problem here is that we're trying to call weapon.connect from our AI, but remember, our AI and our weapon are sibling nodes, so we can't guarantee that they've been readied up at the same time. So when our AI is ready, our weapon may not be ready. Um, and this is exactly the reason, and I'm gonna copy this and cut it, this is exactly the reason that we have an initialized function that our parent calls, because when our parent, our enemy in this case, is ready, we know that every child is ready. So we wait for our enemy to be ready to call initialize to tell our AI that, hey, all these things that you need, they are now ready. They are now ready, excuse me. And so we can do the same with our connections here. We know that our weapon is ready, so now we can connect it, uh, connect that out of ammo signal, and we won't get trying to connect to a null object because it's not there. Before I even try running this again, though, even though we did fix that issue, let's actually um, add some handling for our reload action because we added that input, but we never actually added mapping for it so here what I can do is similar to how we did shoot I can say if event dot is action release 
And these don't really need to be ifs or elifs. It doesn't really matter because only one is going to happen. But I'll just do elif. If action is released, reload. Then we can do weapon dot uh, start reload. There we go. So now if I come out here, um, oh, why is our, our muzzle flash shouldn't be showing? What I'm going to do, I think, just to, I think if I run this, we'll see our muzzle flash. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of dumb. Okay, so I'm going to come into our weapon, and just to, like, make sure I don't have to care about whether I have this on or off in the editor if I messed it up, I'm just going to say um, on ready, so we'll say function ready, and I'll just say muzzle flash. Oh, I guess I didn't, don't have a reference to it. All right, that's fine. So on ready var muzzle flash equals muzzle flash. And I'm just going to say muzzle flash dot hide. Um, this is a way, like, if there's things that you don't actually want to be there in your game, or at least not to be visible at it by the start, but you still want them in the editor just to see what it looks like, uh, you can sometimes do something like that where, like, I could have this visible in the editor just to see what it is, and then, you know, I come into our script and I just hide it when the game starts. Generally, I don't like doing that um, for most things because you can forget you've done it and sometimes leads to weird behavior, but... I'll just do that for right now so I don't have to worry about um, everyone's muzzle flash just being there by default. Okay, so now if we run this, no muzzle flashes are visible. That's good. And if I try attacking and I keep shooting, I'll see if I run out of bullets here in a second. I think it's 10. I stopped counting, but yeah. Okay, so I can't fire anymore. So I've run out of bullets. Now if I hit R, <laughs> there's my reload action, which is sweet. Look at that animation. And now I can keep firing. And because our player currently can't die what i can do is just let uh, our enemy fire at me and see if they reload so we'll let this guy have 10 bullets oh my gosh he reloads and fires again look at that ah oh, it's so cool um i'm not sure if it's worth making our reload animation less uh bad for lack of a better word but um i'm kind of inclined to just keep it for now and then you can keep messing with those settings on your own, you know, at home, if you're uh, so inclined to uh, make them look better, which you should be able to do without much work. But guys, we have reloading now. Weapons have ammunition. You can't fire if you run out of ammo and our AI automatically reloads when it runs out. And we've still managed to keep up the nice organization and separation that we have. You know, our weapon is still responsible for reloading and our AI receives a signal and uses that to determine if it should reload. So I'm pretty happy I think with uh, how all this stuff has turned out and we've been able to keep adding features without having to compromise, um, I think good architecture. I'm not saying it's perfect or it's the best way to do it, but it, it works and it's made it really easy for a game to get bigger. You know, last episode we just added uh, Ally AI and it was super easy. We just changed the variable name of some things. So anyway, I hope this has been really helpful. Uh, I hope you're excited to have reloading in your game and I can't wait to see you in the next video where we're going to keep moving forward with the series. See you then.